tingling in the hand. Let's talk about it when it's in your pinky ring finger, maybe a little bit in your middle finger. Got some weakness in the grip. Maybe you're having shoulder pain, neck pain also. Um, let's talk about ways that sometimes this can get misdiagnosed and ways to treat it conservatively. So obviously, as you can see, we just have an upper quarter here. So what I want to start with is let's go ahead and just look at sensory pathways because this is the first thing that usually gets people's attention. They're like, whoa, I have some weird tingling. Uh, so if you guys can see down in here where it says C8, typically whenever somebody tells me they have tingling in the hand, I'm going to say, oh, okay, which fingers? Now this gives me a couple of answers. So obviously if we're looking at nerve root, most people are going to be C8 when it comes down to pinky and ring finger. Most people C7 when it's these, and most people the thumb is C6. So what this tells me and I'm screening is I'm looking at patterns. Now, if somebody comes in and they're telling me they also have weakness in their grip, I'm definitely going to be thinking about C8 and this ulnar nerve that I'll show you in a second. And let me go ahead and take the skin off. So a lot of times when you go to a physician, they're going to look at your neck. They're going to look at a couple places in your arm. And I'm going to go ahead and we'll just start with the neck because that's where everything originates anyway. So I'm a big fan of starting spinal. So if you can see here, these are little nerve roots that come out. They are named by what they are in between. So this one comes out. It's the eighth one that comes out. It's underneath the C7. This right here is C7. So when you tip your head forward, and you're trying to think, where in the world is she talking about? Tip your head forward, and that bone that pokes out the most is generally C7. So we're going to look at this C8. Let me click a little higher up on the nerve root so it shows us the whole pathway here. Okay, so here's where it comes out, and this is the actual nerve root. Now we're going to go back, and I want to look at the actual branches of it. So if we're looking at where it comes out, obviously you can see this is a good chunk of the arm has blue, it's highlighted. This is all starting from the low cervical. Now it's not to say that if you have anything down here, you have an actual issue that is significant at the neck, but these nerves are communicating channels. So we always wanna talk about where it starts, where it ends, and the message pathway in between. So what you'll notice down here is how much of the hand. So that's why I mentioned when people are talking about having grip strength issues, we definitely want to look at low cervical. And then in particular, we're going to come down and we're going to look at the ulnar nerve. So these are just the branches of C8. We're going to go ahead and unclick off of here. And we're going to look at some of these muscles and I'll tell you what I'm talking about. So when we look at deep muscles of the hand, and we're in the palm if you can't tell for which side we're on, all of these really deep ones, if you'll look over here, and this is just a really nice program, I enjoy it, it's called Complete Anatomy. This is supplied from C8 to T1, but it's a deep branch of the ulnar nerve. So if we're gonna look and say, what? okay, what's the ulnar nerve? It obviously supplies all of these gripping muscles of the hand, and every single one that I'm clicking on right now is ulnar nerve. So if you think about squeezing, making a fist, if you got a problem there, these are going to be weak. So this is, again, just matching patterns so that I know as a therapist where I need to be looking. So if you've heard of your funny bone, your funny bone is your ulnar nerve. So let me get in and up to where to let me click on it. So the ulnar nerve in general, let's go ahead and look at it, cleared off just the ulnar nerve. Where it comes down, we already saw where it starts from the neck and we come down here. It traces along behind the tricep area, and then it comes down and it goes right where that funny bone area is, comes along that inner part of your forearm, and then it goes into the hand. So what I would like to look at and show you guys, because if you're finding this video, I'm assuming you have tingling in this part of your hand or some pain along this pathway, or you've been told you have a low cervical issue. So muscles that I want to show you, because oftentimes physicians will come in and say, oh, we just need to do surgery. We need to cut here. We need to cut here. We need to move this nerve out of its pathway. And I'll show you why. Because there is a lot of connective tissue that lives over it and around it. I'll take this one off. Where it goes through 
there are muscles, if we add on more, right here, you can see where if this compresses, we may have some problems, right? So surgeons like to go in and they like to release those spots and then they like to move the nerve. Now, I am not a big proponent of this at all. Let's come back to forward facing. Unless absolutely necessary because nerves, if you watch any of my other videos, have to move and they have to move well. So if you're only going to snip one spot, but you've got pain in the forearm, you have numbness in the hand, you've got some shoulder pain, there is other irritation. Anywhere that that nerve supplies muscle-wise, which we just showed, it's down in the hand. There's also a couple in the forearm over in here that are supplied by the ulnar nerve. Okay, so if you don't recognize that now when that messaging center, which is the nerve, anything it supplies, it's been irritated. So the whole chain is going to be funky. So if we just simply go in here and we snip and then we make it sit still, we lose all of that good neural gliding that we need for a good healthy nervous system. And I just, I do not like it unless totally necessary. So let's take a look. Sorry, I'm making this hard for you guys to see what I'm looking at. This is bicep, and I'm going to spin it so you can see these are underneath parts of your tricep. So when I'm working on people and they have an ulnar nerve issue, I can get on this inner arm here and a little bit on that inside tricep, and it usually is lighting up. Okay, now not because it's necessarily just innervated by it, because this is actually by C7, which is the nerve root right above it. But because that nerve going through, there can be chemical irritation. Anything around that nerve uh, can be irritated. So I tend to, when I get on some of these even deeper muscles, this is part of your tricep as well. This is from C8, but this is part of your radial nerve. So this one I say, when we're just piecing a puzzle together, all this stuff is connected because you don't have one nerve root that's not affected by the one right above or below it. But if you're experiencing tingling in your hand, if you start massaging gently, because this can be really tender up in these areas, I bet you will probably feel some change, increased tingling, things like that, as well as if you come down along these muscle bellies. Okay. Now, the other place that I want to show you is where it comes up on the back of the arm. And there's obviously all these other nerves. You'll hear about tingling on the back of the hand. That's a different nerve. This video is kind of specifically looking at the ulnar nerve. Okay, so back to Mr. Ulnar nerve here. So you can see a little bit better too. Tricep, it goes underneath. So I'm actually going to take off that tricep a second. Okay, and where it comes up and goes underneath. A lot of times people have this kind of feeling of tension underneath their arm here, kind of weirdness into their armpit. If we throw on a little bit, I just want to turn so you guys can see where things are. Where it comes up, it goes through very close to your subscapularis muscle, which is part of your rotator cuff. So a lot of times on my ulnar nerve patients, I will get underneath their armpit and I will work in this zone and I'll release your subscapularis muscle. And then I always come up and we work all along this area. But hopefully that just gives a little bit of an overview. I always, 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 when someone has tingling in the hand, we work the entire chain because it is a communicating symptom from spine all the way down. And then everything in between that that nerve either innervates or comes near can be affected. So we're going to work the whole chain. We're going to glide those nerves after we work on the common places where they tend to be stuck and sticky. And then we strengthen everything in place so that we get that good return to normal functional movement.